whether or not someone has the chops to be a strategic marketing operations professional. You know, strategic for me doesn't really translate to like um, X number of years of experience. I mm-hmm. think um, for me, there's three factors that I, I really look for. Um, the first one is a good understanding of the tech stack landscape. Yeah. Um, and I think this is super important because as ops professionals, um, you understand the entire tech stack better than anyone. If you can connect the dots and speak that language, mm-hmm. um, that will help you make decisions across the board. Um, the second one for me is communication. Um, someone that's able to communicate really clearly and concisely. Um, mm-hmm. A interview question that I, I always like to ask is explain Mercado to me mm-hmm. as if I were five years old. And uh, yeah. it's a very, fun way of like making an analogy and, you know, explaining something in plain English um, Mm -hmm. and translating that technical language back. Um, And I think lastly is, is really adaptation. Um, I think oftentimes, you know, we get a lot of projects, we get a lot of requests and there's like specific guidelines to kind of finish those. Mm -hmm. I think as um, a strategic, you know, marketing ops professional, as you're going through this project, if somewhere along the lines you're like, hey, like this may not be as efficient or this is a better path to take, like being able to understand and recognize that and make those adjustments on the spot, I think really, you know, speaks volumes. Like for me, it's very easy to understand uh, or to get an uh, insight into if somebody has, if somebody's thinking strategically, right? So strategically, mm-hmm. we're thinking big picture. Um, if I, I'm working with um, maybe an analyst, maybe somebody on the team, um, and I'm saying, here's the task, like, this is what we need to get done. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that analyst comes back to me, and they have just done the one thing that I asked them to do. Uh-huh. Uh, it's very evident, uh, because in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's cool. You want to do the one thing. But like, what are the other components that go into it? Like, what are the other pieces yeah. of the data that we need? Uh, what about like, how does this impact the business? Does this change process? Um, so understanding like the types of questions people ask when given just kind of a straight task um, and how they're thinking about things and how long they spend thinking about the process really mm-hmm. gives me an understanding if they have uh, kind of a strategic thought process uh, and if they uh, have the ability um, to kind of be strategic when we're thinking about marketing operations. I feel like there are a lot of components that go into that, both in hard skills that can be taught and in soft skills that can't be. And the way I see it is you can teach someone about the business. You can teach them your business objectives, your business goals, your OKRs, and really what the goal is within your team. Each organization is going to have a different go-to-market strategy. They're going to have a different target audience. Maybe you're a freemium model where your goal is to try to get people to sign up, adopt features, and grow from there. Maybe you're a very bespoke solution that someone has to sign up for a demo and go through that process. Maybe you're in B2C that is completely different from how a B2B go-to-market would look. That can be taught. Evaluating the leadership piece, though, and the strategic thinking is where a lot of those soft skills come in. And a lot of that is born from curiosity. And you can't teach curiosity. Someone who is looking at a process and thinking about a way to do something better, what could save time, what could improve the efficiency, what's going to help the marketing team reach their goals in marketing operations. Those are the things you should should start looking at for an individual. How do they think about those things? How do they solve problems. Mm -hmm. We all know in marketing operations, there's always problems, right? We're we're never short on those. Um, How are people thinking about ways to solve those problems? Is that creativity and curiosity coming into play? And I think that's the biggest piece that I see. Then you layer on how would they look in a leader role? And that comes into relationship building. Are they able to make connections across other areas of the business? Or are they very much like, hey, I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to do my job. Let me do my thing. Mm -hmm. Or 
Are they out there talking to other areas of the business? Are they looking at bigger problems and how that efficiency scales, not just beyond their individual team, but potentially to other teams or other areas of the organization? How are they communicating that? So anyone that's in a leadership role, you're not just working with your peers, you're working up, whether that's the next level up, whether that's the C-suite, whether that's the board level, you're always working to communicate upward. So are you taking that strategy or that idea and communicating that effectively? Are you leveraging those relationships then to get buy-in for that strategic idea to actually put it into practice? Many of us don't work in a vacuum. Yeah. So you've got to be able to get that buy-in from whether that's sales ops, GTM ops, IT, InfoSec, leadership, if there's budget involved, maybe your C CFO. How are you doing that? How are you bringing that to the table and really actually communicating and leveraging those relationships to achieve that strategic initiative? And I think all of those pieces really go together. Um, the pieces that can be taught and the pieces that are just intrinsic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think as, as a marketing leader, we often see that a lot in junior team members and how they're thinking about and communicating situations that they run into. Um, and you'll really see, you know, leaders come to the forefront, the people that are speaking up, that aren't afraid to say, hey, something's broken or, hey, I think something that can do um, this function better exists. And I think we should evaluate that. Um, look for those people, foster that, invest in them. Those are your next marketing operations leaders. Excellent. I mean, you can you can teach someone what the goals actually are, but how how they think about it and how they connect the dots. That's mm -hmm. that's the biggest piece is where where the string art sort of comes together, right? Here's our OKRs, here's our goal, here's what we mm -hmm. need to do to get there, here's the data we have. Mm -hmm. How do we yeah. put it all together? How do we tell the story? How do we create that next initiative that helps us grow the business. I mean, every, every business's goal is revenue, period. The business doesn't yeah. get, doesn't make money. We don't have jobs. We don't get paid. Exactly. Period. Exactly. So it's, you know, stringing, stringing each of those pieces together. That's where, that's where the strategic thinking really comes in. To me, if you're being strategic, you're looking mm -hmm. at not just your, your world, your silo, you're looking across the whole mm -hmm. entire organization. And you're going to be asking questions about, for what I'm doing, how is this impact downstream to sales? How is this working for marketing? How is this going to be measured? How is this going to be successful? Um, mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? Um, mm -hmm. So some people really get excited to do a task, right? So some people mm -hmm. think they're strategic because they're trying a new playbook task. Like, I'm going to do digital marketing for the first time. Or maybe, like, I'm going to introduce... Uh, this cool um, AI initiative um, mm -hmm. by maybe bringing in a new technology without really vetting it and understanding, does this make sense? How does this work? Why are we mm -hmm. want to do something like that? So just getting that clear is like, I'm looking for somebody who's thinking about big picture. So some of the questions I, I like to go into um, here at where I work, uh, we do look at STAR, which is situation, task, action, and result. Okay. So we'll ask a question that's sort of open-ended, like tell me about a time where um, you overcame a challenge. They have to talk about tasks is really what were they in this in, uh, situation? Mm -hmm. um, what they did <clears throat> through that act, through that sort of situation and what mm -hmm. the outcome was. So talking through and giving a clear direction about what they did, how it impacted, it helps show that they're thinking through a little bit bigger uh, picture. For me, I just rehired a whole bunch of people to my role. And what I find also very important mm -hmm. is the questions. I always leave about 10 minutes at the end of the interview yeah. to try and see what questions they're going to ask me. If you're mm -hmm. asking me what I liked about what you presented, and that's the only question you have, that is not showing me that you're strategic. Oh, no. Oh, my God. So it's that's more about... Part. It's a, more about like having those questions um, that how does the organization work? What are you looking for? What is what does success look like in this role? What does it look like in a couple of years? Asking more of those um, probing questions to understand not only that one position they're in, but also how it all works together. 
I think that's extremely important to understand. Are you thinking strategically? Our world's evolving every day. So I need learners. I want people who are excited to learn and to experience new and to not say I did this before and I just know, like I know Marketo, I know HubSpot, this is how it works. I need people who are learners. So one of the things I also check to see is, are they actively reading, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks? Um, how are they getting more educated every day? Um, do they frequently go to conferences? Are they active on Slack channels? So mm -hmm. those things are also very important to me too, to know that they are interested and in going above and beyond what their sort of current situation is. How are they learning to understand more about the full organization and how everything's working, plus the change in our environments, because everything's changing today. Not one thing is the same. <laughs> <laughs> so generative AI, how is that going to impact us? Are you trying to play around mm -hmm. with chat GBT? Are you trying to learn about prompting? Are you watching prompt videos uh, from mm -hmm. people on LinkedIn? How are you starting to get an understanding of these new changes? So that's a really mm -hmm. important part for me too. So for me, like this is a very easy, simple question because I would simply ask, how would you go about doing something? And mm -hmm. how would you go from step A to step B? How would you socialize something? What's the communication mm -hmm. perspective? Like what's your communication plan? What's your go to, um, what's your change management plan going to be? How would you roll this out to the team? Like, mm -hmm. so those are simple questions I would ask. And based on, um, based on that question, I would be, can you tell me from step one to step, you know, 10, it doesn't have to be in, in any sort of order, but like it would be best if it was in some sort of order. But if you could just walk me through your mindset and how you would go about this, to mm -hmm. me, I have a very, very good idea of if they're strategic or not, or, or if they would very much align with my strategy in the company. So for me, I like people that will challenge me and mm -hmm. I like people that will have an opinion about some things, not someone that will just go along with it and someone that can actually execute on a lot of the strategies. Another thing that that would probably make me a lot better too is prioritizing different types of um, optical wins for the company because they have to understand how they can strategically align themselves to have a, a little bit of a like a push for a positive outcome. And it, they have to understand how to tell also their strategy to other people in a way where you're hitting their pain point. You have to be a storyteller and socialize your strategic element into other departments. So for me, yeah. if I see those aspects, I see that person is a different level of strategic element because they're not just understanding the technology, but they're understanding yep. the uh, individual's pain points, individual departments, like ability to move the needle that will motivate them. And so for me, as I level up in my career, I'm starting to understand how important storytelling and how important, important alignment is not with just not a technical perspective, but also like a storytelling perspective, meaning people are going to explain their problems to you in a storytelling part of you. They're going to, they're going to have user stories and user stories are going to have problems. People are not going to really care about the technical perspective unless you're talking yeah. to IT and security. They're going to really be emotional about it. So you have to communicate that way. The most important thing that the key thing that I look for when someone is asking for strategic question is, is this, for, especially from a technical and strategy question, is understanding the flow of the user, understanding who the user is, and it's your job to make it frictionless, right? To make it frictionless and having a good flow. So whatever strategy they have, I would love them to repeat their strategy to me. And, and then I always ask a second layer, like, how do you make this more frictionless? And how do you make this as a better flow for the user? And for me, that gives me another indication of what another stage that they're in. And that's like, okay, you have reached level four of Tetris because mm -hmm. to me, you're understanding how the flow of energy is and the flow of how your technical execution and your technical solution is actually looking to solve the end user and how easy of a flow it is. Because for me, friction, we are all 
every technology, every type of conversion is all some sort of friction. And your job as a technical architect or as a strategic element is to decrease that friction so the end user is able to solve the solution as quickly as possible. The first thing I think of is the ability to think outside the box. And I say that because I've been at several companies and each company has some kind of nuance or difference in how they approach mops and how yeah. they, you know, like run their campaigns or run their team or whatever. And so I feel like if you're really trying to get to that strategic leader type mops person, you have to have that ability to look at each company differently, each situation differently. And mm -hmm go about solving whatever the problem is based on the needs of that team or, or company. You definitely have to be a problem solver mm -hmm. and not just someone who can only like say no, because I know a lot of times mobs people are known for saying no. And I do recall working at this one company where our ops leadership was like, basically the guy was known as Mr. No. And, wow. and I feel like a lot of times um, if you don't have that ability to not only like, you know, see, of course you have to be detailed and understand all the nuances of your technology, but you have to have that ability to be able to partner with the business on actually yeah. solving a problem and not just being like, now <laughs> we're not doing yes. that. <laughs> that ability to speak both languages. So the techie language and the business language, I think that is so critical. And I, I have especially had to work on that myself, um, having been really in the weeds of mops and then kind of moving up um, to more leadership roles within mops. That knowing that skill of like, you know, reading the room and understanding your audience and what makes sense to them, I think is really, really important um, if you're trying to be a more strategic mops leader.